Let's talk about Baldy real quick. In the God of War saga that boxed it up with Kratos and Atreus in the first game, the God of Light, part of the reason he's so powerful is because he's part Vanir and Aesir, his mama being Freya, the mightiest magical being we've seen, and Odin the all five himself. So that's part of the reason why he's so strong. But let's get it. How strong is he? First of all, right off the gate, he was cursed with being immune to all physical threats, physical or magical. Thanks to his mama wanting to prevent a prophecy of protecting him. But you're probably thinking, oh, that sounds awesome. An invincibility curse? Well, actually, it was at the cost of never being able to feel nothing. Pleasure, not being able to eat no food, not being able to feel cold, not being able to feel hot. Like nothing. It kind of drove him insane. He can use different elemental modes like fire and ice mode to attack you with stuff like this. Just like that with fire. You can see the fire raging within him. Creating a wave of fire or fire from multiple directions. You see the ice projectiles he can shoot at you. Like, it's cool to be invincible at all, but at the cost of not being able to feel nothing ever, that, that's pretty intense. It was suck to not be able to taste, smell, or feel temperature. Feasting, drinking, women, it's all gone. No pleasures. Balder even argued with her saying he would rather die than not be able to feel nothing. Part of the reason why he gave Kratos so much issue in the game was because of this invincibility type of curse. But even without the curse, he's still a ridiculous threat because he's a god after all, the god of light and the son of Odin, of course. So he's got to be strong regardless of that, right? All this damage done by Kratos, it was able to instantly go away because of the curse. This part right here with Kratos, he got his neck popped and he was fine after this. To prove that the curse was actually legit and you can't just kill him at all based on this invincibility curse. I shouldn't even really have to get on it, but the fact that he was pretty much Kratos' little mini rival throughout this whole game lets you know his might and he's not a weakling in comparison. And it's definitely implied he can definitely damage beings that are powerful like Kratos. Look how he tackles Kratos into like this pillar. For example, just sticking him, complete slugfest with him with Kratos. There's just too many occasions of him punching Kratos like this, it flies in the air after him, and a literal slug fest with standing attacks from him. These two legit had a contest of strength with Kratos himself and collateral of them clashing their muscles with each other. You see the shock waves and you see the landmass messing up in the area. Look at this mess. Like he's matching his strength that much, making their own little splits just from the pressure, the energy these two are putting out together against Kratos. He can lift up this big old stone that was thrown on him by Kratos that like it weighs hundreds of tons at least and he can toss it with his strength. The environment is not safe when in a battle of titans like this. Look how he punched Kratos into the rock. We never really got on his fighting skills, doing wrestling moves, and kicking Kratos through some trees like that. Kratos being surprised by his might to be able to do this to him. Just like this, doing wrestling style stuff. This was the biggest shock to everybody to show off how strong he was, surprising Kratos by, by hitting him that hard. Blitzing and caving in the ground. How many people do you know that can pin down Kratos like this and give him some issues with strength? He's getting tag teamed. And he's still holding his ground. Got him by the neck like this. Not to mention when it comes to just punching with crazy force. When Kratos and Atreus were literally inside the world serpent's body. Barter was punching so hard that his punches can be felt all the way in the inside of him. To the point where Kratos and them fell out of the snake. And, and it's all because of Balder knocking out this giant planet-sized snake, Jormungandr. And you're probably thinking, this ain't nothing just because he's big don't mean nothing. Well, considering he fought Thor, and their battle could be felt across all of the realms and universes, a.k.a., you know, like, you know how the tree holds all these different universes on inside of it? Past, present, and future, all existing at the same time? That snake is strong enough to produce energy to the point where even other universes feel their punch in. So not only did he knock out a planet-sized snake that matched Thor, this snake produced energy with Thor that can be felt in multiple universes, or one could say shaking multiple universes. And Balder knocked it out with a couple hits. But yeah, it was a sucker punch, but that's still impressive, considering how strong this snake is. Not to mention this overpowered world tree that exists in past, present, and future, and nourishes the land and everything in the universe, and holds multiple universes, got splintered by a clash from the serpent and Thor. Proven here how they say they clash violently to shake the tree of life that it splinters. Doing time manipulation by accident and casting the serpent backward through time. This is not just a quote either. This actually happened when it comes to accidentally sending them back in time because of their clash. And Balder can compete with these beings on this tier. Not to mention, you gotta watch my Kratos video to really get an understanding on why matching Kratos and power is ridiculous considering all the stuff he's done. Having the endurance to withstand direct beatings from this guy. Hitting the face with a tree. Head gets punched in stone. He continues to keep on fighting after his slams like this. Even after combos. Yep. Stupid arrows. What are you doing? Them arrows ain't enough. Get out of his face. 
He legit got stabbed by the Leviathan Axe and kept on fighting. Oh yeah, he has magical abilities with elemental stuff, by the way. Even being stabbed in the gut, just like this with the Blades of Chaos, he kept fighting after this. All this abuse he took. All these arrows he can withstand. And a team up, he's able to withstand this bullcrap too. Just like that. And he's pretty swift in combat. He can use his speed to kind of attack you with it. You can see him use his fighting speed in this combat with Kratos. The way he dies, his attacks. Him and Kratos are even fought while they was high in the air on some dragon. As you know, they crazy. Constantly being a nuisance for Kratos, punching him that hard. But at the end of the day, I think you guys get the idea of Baldur's Might. I mean, anybody that can match Kratos in raw contest of strength like this, the same Kratos that overpowered the physical might of beings like Kronos, a titan that beat his own father, who's a cosmic being primordial that created the entire universe from when it comes to Greek, the Greek universe. Kronos defeated the creator of the universe, and Kratos defeated the guy that defeated the creator of the universe. And Balder is matching his strength. Well, nothing more that I could say. Yeah, but respect to Balder, the god of light. But before I get going, thanks for the donations, guys. It helps out a lot. Respect Balder. I'm glad you are enjoying your time on the channel. Make sure you check out the playlist on the channel to see other How Strong videos. If you like what this channel is offering, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys later.